so I can't actually see the screen here, so I'll have to keep looking at the, uh, at the big screen. Uh, as uh, Mir said, I'm John Ike. I'm uh, the president of Radiating Hope and also a professor uh, at the University of California, San Diego. And, you know, for this is now my third GHAS conference that I've attended, and I've deliberately avoided uh, a discussion of prostate brachytherapy uh, because in the past I, I didn't think it was terribly uh, relevant for, um, for uh, treatment in this part of Africa. Uh, I've, I've been told recently, though, that there is more and more interest in, in brachytherapy. There's actually a distributor for radioactive seeds in, in South Africa. And um, I don't know if anyone has any information about this, but I've also been told by one of the, the uh, representatives recently that there is someone in Kenya doing prostate brachytherapy. So I wanted to discuss this uh, a little bit more today. So disclosures, Therogenics, uh, one of the companies that makes the majority of uh, the I-125 and Palladium seats, did give a, a donation uh, for this uh, conference. So is, is prostate brachytherapy uh, relevant uh, in East Africa? This is just a map uh, showing uh, rates of uh, prostate cancer in various parts of the world. And you can see in general, um, in uh, East Africa and in Africa in general, it's quite low. And of course, it's because we don't have uh, a lot of screening. Uh, in the United States, our, our incidence of prostate cancer is quite high, but the mortality from prostate cancer is quite low because we're diagnosing a lot of patients that don't require treatment, uh, low risk and favorable intermediate risk patients that are never going to die of the disease. In terms of prostate cancer mortality, you know, there are, uh, as it have, has been pointed out several times at this conference, uh, a number of deaths from prostate cancer. In fact, it's one of the more common uh, uh, in men uh, for cancer mortality. This is just uh, uh, the uh, incidence of prostate cancer. I just pulled out several countries uh, in East Africa from Globacan 2012. Just showing numbers of cases are very low, but as you know, the way that we capture cases of prostate cancer are usually uh, patients presenting to a uh, hospital uh, for admission that have end-stage disease. So although the, the incidence is low, um, the, uh, most, the majority of these patients are presenting with, with advanced prostate cancer. Um, however, the incidence is going to increase. Prostate cancer is underreported. Um, it's the third highest cause of death in Africa. As you know, the population is growing. The population is aging and living longer. Um, but until screening is widespread, the number of patients presenting with incurable disease will continue to be high. Treatment options for prostate cancer uh, in our country include active surveillance. In fact, it's becoming more and more often to not treat these patients at all if we're reasonably certain that they have a low-grade prostate cancer. Uh, radical prostatectomy, uh, frequently done in the United States. External beam radiation therapy, typically we use IMRT for that, or uh, brachytherapy for treatment of the disease. Um, this is a, sort of a picture of, of Western medicine uh, of the United States. You know, the more we do, the more we get paid. And um, until that uh, kind of changes, we're going to continue, in our country at least, to overtreat prostate cancer and, and bill insurance companies and, and do these unnecessary treatments. And I'll, I'll get to why I think the financial aspects of prostate cancer treatment are important later on. So uh, again, this has been pointed out a number of times, so I won't dwell on it. Just a slide looking at the availability of external beam radiation therapy uh, in Africa. So brachytherapy uh, is really uh, describing the implantation of radioactive sources or needles directly into the diseased organ. Why brachytherapy? Well, there's no lin uh, LINAC or cobalt machine required for brachytherapy. It is a, uh, a one and done type of treatment for prostate cancer. There's no shielding required for brachytherapy implants. The treatment's completed in one day if you're doing a low dose rate seed implant. Brachytherapy is economical. It's got very high cure rates, and the long-term risk of complications is very low. 
So who is a candidate for brachytherapy? Really any patient with localized non-metastatic prostate cancer. Gleason score 6 to 10, uh, you know, there, there is data showing that the results are probably better in high-risk prostate cancer patients with Gleason scores of 8, 9, or 10 if they have supplemental external beam. Uh, patients of any PSA, although the lower the PSA, the higher the chance of the brachytherapy working. Prostate gland size needs to be less than 60 or 70 cc's because anything larger than that is just not going to be accessible with transperineal needles. And, um, but if it's too large, you can shrink it down with uh, hormone therapy. Uh, and ADT for three months will shrink it down by 30 to 40 percent. So the equipment needed for brachytherapy, um, this is just a, a gurney uh, with stirrups attached and a brachytherapy stepper device. You need rectal ultrasound. You need a disposable uh, template, um, uh, or uh, these can be metal and reusable and sterilizable as well. And this is the actual stepper device that we use for brachytherapy. There are a number of seeds available for treatment with brachytherapy. The most common, because it, it's the cheapest and most economical, is iodine-125. This describes the energy. These are relatively low energy seeds, so you're going to have to use a lot of seeds and place them close together in order to cover the entire prostate gland. I-125 has a half-life of 60 days, so uh, there's residual... Hello there. There's residual... Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's all right. <clears throat> and the price with I-125 is low. This is just to point out there are palladium-103 seeds and cesium-131 seeds. Uh, there's a randomized trial of I-125 versus palladium showing that they're equivalent in, in terms of disease control. So my feeling is why not use the least expensive seed? It works well and has a low risk of causing problems. Uh, this is the position the patient's in uh, for seed implant. They're in dorsal lithotomy position with the uh, legs and stirrups. Uh, just a schematic here, the needles are placed through the perineum into the prostate gland under axial imaging and then you can switch to sagittal imaging and place the first seed at the interface between the prostate and uh, bladder. Uh, Therogenics, uh, which is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the company that makes the majority of the seeds uh, in the United States, actually will do uh, preloaded needles. So what we do is we create a pre-plan. We order the needles already constructed with stranded seeds from the manufacturer and they're shipped. Uh, Therogenics uh, is willing to do that all over the world. And like I mentioned, they have a, a, a distributor uh, in Johannesburg. Um, Brachytherapy implants require a volume study. This is a sagittal ultrasound picture of the prostate gland showing the approximate location of the urethra. The prostate's in red. We use a margin of five millimeters all around the prostate for our PTV, except for no margin posterior along the rectal wall. This is what a, a, a treatment plan looks like. So this is an axial view uh, of the prostate gland. Each of these uh, is a needle and uh, the shape here, the triangle, circle, square, really tells you how far to put that needle in and which plane on the sagittal image that needle needs to be inserted to. This is, uh, we like to do regular spacing of seeds. So each thing in pink here is a seed and in between each seed is a five millimeter spacer. So seed implant is done under a combination of axial and sagittal imaging. Uh, after we place the needle at the appropriate location, so perhaps there's a needle here at, at uh, we call this big E 2.5, we'll then switch to the sagittal image and determine how far in to, push, uh, to place the needle so that uh, the seeds are starting right at the uh, bladder and prostate interface. The procedure is done in dorsal lithotomy position under general anesthesia, although it can be done under local anesthesia. If you don't have an operating room or an anesthesiologist, it's, it's not difficult to get the patient numb enough to do this procedure. Uh, we use uh, needle placement is done transperineally. 60 to 100 iodine-125 seeds uh, are placed per patient. Uh, the seeds cost about $20 each. 
So you can see if you put in 100 seeds, that's about $2,000 is the uh, cost of the implant. The uh, uh, procedure lasts about two hours in the average patient and it's well tolerated. Um, just another uh, schematic of what the uh, uh, needle placement looks like. Um, you know, seed implant uh, got a bad reputation in the uh, 1970s and early 80s because patients were actually opened up surgically and the seeds were placed uh, from above into the prostate using a trans uh, uh, abdominal approach. And this is what the results look like. Where's my pointer? This is what the results look like. So you can see the seeds are really scattered uh, in a, uh, a haphazard uh, fashion. This is a recent seed implant that I did. You can see the seeds are nicely lined up. This is transperineal. You can see perfectly where these seeds are going and place them uniformly throughout the prostate gland. Uh, this is typical dosimetry for prostate seed implant. The uh, red here is the contour of the prostate and the red here is the 100% isodose curve. So you can see on a typical prostate seed implant, we have a U-shaped cold spot here around the urethra, but even that so-called cold spot is 125% of the prescription dose. And the yellow line here is the 150% uh, isodose curve. You're never going to get this appearance with external beam radiation therapy. We're getting 150% of our prescription dose to the peripheral zone of the prostate where the cancer is most likely to live. So uh, just to go through some results, um, the first experience with uh, uh, modern day transperineal brachytherapy was published uh, in Seattle. Uh, this is an update by John Sylvester, but initially published by John Blasco in the 90s. Um, from 1988 to 1992, so just to show you, uh, even starting out a seed implant program, you can get really high cure rates and really nice results. Uh, this is their first uh, 215 consecutive patients done with iodine-125. The dose was 145 gray. Of course, 80% of these patients were low risk, and I think nowadays we know that whatever we do for low risk patients, it's likely to work. Uh, their Gleason scores were less than or equal to six, and none of them had ADT. Long-term results show excellent 15-year biochemical relapse-free survival, particularly those patients with relatively low PSAs. Uh, Long-term uh, uh, PSA control was about 90%. In terms of side effects and risks of brachytherapy, there are uh, one to two days of hematuria from a brachytherapy implant. There's short-term soreness over the perineum, a weak urinary stream just from sticking them with needles and having some swelling, urinary frequency. And uh, the real thing I caution patients about and really counsel them seriously is that they, they are gonna have radiation urethritis for about six months. Uh, maximal at about two to three months and then gradually improving. About 80% of patients are back to normal within nine months to a year. Uh, the long-term risk, there's a two to three percent risk of radiation proctitis with just mild rectal bleeding that requires treatment. Two percent risk of urethral stricture which can be a, a complicated thing to fix. 70 to 80 percent of patients who are sexually active before seed implant retain their sexual activity uh, afterwards, and uh, uh, probably the most catastrophic thing that can happen from a seed implant is a rectourethral fistula, but fortunately that's rare at 0.25%. Um, and just to show you this doesn't just work in uh, low-risk patients, there's a, a huge group of patients published uh, by the Vancouver group of intermediate risk patients, 1,006 consecutive patients, 42% had intermediate risk disease. Five-year disease-free survival was 96.7% and 10-year was 94.1%, so excellent long-term results. Um, and, and again, looking at uh, disease-free survival, overall survival and cause-specific survival, excellent overall results. So this is a group of purely intermediate risk patients, uh, 260 men also treated in Vancouver with high intermediate risk prostate cancer. So these, these are the patients that are much more likely to require treatment and develop problems from their disease without treatment. Um, these patients all had two intermediate risk factors, a PSA above 10 and at least a Gleason score of seven. Uh, they underwent seed implant without external beam and five-year uh, uh, biochemical NED 
status was 85%. Patients who had ADT did as well as those patients that did not. So these patients seem to do well with just seed implant alone. Um, there, there are now, uh, there's now a randomized trial of much more advanced patients with uh, unfavorable intermediate and high risk disease. The group again in Vancouver treated 398 intermediate or high risk patients with 12 months of ADT, external beam radiation therapy and then a seed implant boost. The nine year biochemical progression free survival with just external beam alone was 62.4% versus 88.3% with brachytherapy boost. It's the first randomized trial showing that these patients do substantially better with brachytherapy boost. There's an overall trend, uh, overall survival trend favoring brachytherapy, but not statistically significant. Uh, the uh, only uh, uh, drawback is that grade three GU toxicity was 8.6%, mostly strictures in the brachytherapy arm compared to 2.2% in the external beam only arm. Uh, looking at the, uh, the uh, uh, disease-free survival curves, you can see what a dramatic difference uh, LDR brachytherapy made in the treatment of these patients. So overall, brachytherapy is effective for a variety of patients. It's an efficient, single, one-day procedure, and it's relatively low risk in terms of long-term side effects. How much does radiation cost? So this is a slide I put together. This is how much it costs in the United States. So IMRT 45 fractions, which is a really common regimen, is about 23,000. This is how much Medicare, which is our, our, our uh, government uh, insurance for retired people, will pay. Um, there's a hypofractionated IMRT, uh, 28 fractions. You can cut that down to about $16,000. There's also a much shorter version, 20 fractions IMRT, 13,000. We have quite a bit of stereotactic radiation therapy with five fractions in the United States, about the same price, 13,000. Uh, protons, which are, uh, I think, becoming increasingly popular for prostate cancer, 32,000. And prostate seed implant, $9,000. I've already told you that the seeds themselves, at least in the United States, cost about $2,000. And that is really the only expense once a program gets up and running. So in summary, brachytherapy is an effective, economical, and efficient procedure for treatment of prostate cancer. There's no LINAC or cobalt machine required in, most, in many cases. And the investment to start a program is low compared to a teletherapy program. Thank you. <laughs>